Ladies and gentlemen, our next performer, comedian, winner of the Billy T Award for his one-man show, A Better Place, about his own dark depression. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm welcome to comedian Chris Brain. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm a comedian. I, I'm not really here to do like a set or stand-up comedy. That seems slightly odd. So uh, I just really want to talk about my experience that I've had with it. Um, so I'm a comedian, Cantabrian, and um, gifted self-medicator. <laughs> I, can, I can medicate myself with pretty much everything. Uh, alcohol and drugs were my two favourites, obviously. Uh, alcohol is good at, good at drinking. I was a really good drinker. Um, so when I was at uni, this is sort of what I... Walking and sort of running up to being diagnosed at uh, uni and I was drunk every day for six months. Like, all day, every day. I didn't stop drinking. I, just, I didn't really even get out of bed. Um, so I'd, drinking beer is quite civilised to feel like when you're drunk, you know, it's quite nice. But there are some, some problems I got. I used to get, um, we used to pass out, basically. I used to drink till I passed out. Uh, which is a problem if you, you know, have a drink in you. Because you, you sort of sleep and then wake up and you check Daniels on his sheets, which is, well, I hope it was Jack Daniels, right? Um, <laughs> might not have been. Uh, but because I'm gifted, I came up with a, a solution to that. So I went out and I bought myself, I mean, one of those baby sippy cup. <laughs> yep, I was that guy. <laughs> it was powder blue with a white lid. It was great. You know, the little time you like fall asleep, it would, uh, you know, you wake up and go, oh, breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> had the added bonus of having a little, it had a little teddy bear on it as well, which was nice because it was there, you know. Not judging you, <laughs> which was important. I, I, knew, I sort of knew I wasn't. Um, I knew I wasn't well. You know, through that time, things were spiralling out of control. So I ended up going to see a doctor and was diagnosed with depression. Uh, when I was twenty. Um, except it's not. It's not depression, is it? It's not. That's not what it's called. That's what we call it. It's the polite name for it. I got told I had major depressive disorder. Yeah, I, exactly. I thought I was a bit upset. I didn't realise I had a major fucking disorder to go with it. You know what that is? That's depressing. <laughs> a nicer name, for God's sake. Recession, maybe. I don't know. Um, I, uh, I, so I, I sort of, when I was, because I was 20 at the time, I thought, oh, I need to figure out what's caused this. You know, because I figured if I figured out what caused it, I could fix it and be normal. Be a normal person because I didn't want to be sick and I didn't want to especially want to be mentally ill. So I did my research and well actually kind of what I thought was it'd be nice to find out exactly what caused it and you could vaccinate kids against it, maybe, you know, because I've got really you know, because you know how vaccinations work, you know, they give you a little bit of the disease when you're a kid and your body forms sort of antibodies and if you get the disease later when you get older, it fights it for you and that's that's how so vaccinations work. And um, you can't do that really. It's not like you, the, only, the, the only thing I could think of was, you know, like to show my niece Schindler's List over and over again. <laughs> and, Life sucks sometimes! Um, you're, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> it's borderline child abuse, apparently, so I don't see my niece very often anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I, I, um, I, you know, I was trying to fix, you know, fix myself, um, and what I came to the conclusion eventually was that the depression is one thing, but um, there was a whole untapped trigger to it, which was the anxiety, which I don't really talk about very often, the, um, the anxiety part of it. Um, fix everything. Um, most of us get it at times to varying degrees, so we get panic attacks. Um, so speaking in front of a group of people, <laughs> perfect job for me. Um, I always start with like a negative thought, you know, something rattling around in your head you can't get rid of, and it, that, that negative thought gets bigger and bigger, you know, and it just pushes all of the, all of the good stuff out of your head um, until all you've got is this negative thought and you start to, that you can't think of anything else. Um, my heart starts beating faster, I can feel it in my chest, I can like, feel it beating, I can feel the, the blood going faster, 
Um, I get a ringing in my ears, uh, which is uh, annoying. I also get this weird metallic taste in the back of my throat. It's, it's like when you bite your tongue, um, so it's not blood, but it's like kind of blood like sort of taste. I can taste that. Um, do this. Um, <laughs> I get this like, like an imaginary stress ball. Uh, I kind of like, um, of course, then the breathing goes on top of that, so <laughs> I'm trying not to shallow breathe. It's terrible, you shallow breathe, which means you, you, um, you can hyperventilate, which means you feel like you can't breathe. Um, so then, when that starts to happen, um, you're not worried about the negative thought anymore, you're just thinking, I'm going to die because I can't <laughs> breathe. Um, so, all I know is that I have to. Um, concentrate on just shutting everything else, um, everything else out, and um, just, um, just So I'm a comedian and stuff. Um, <laughs> so I really wish having a panic attack had a punchline. <laughs> um, but they don't. Um, um, so you get those to varying degrees. I, I, I really wanted to do this here for a couple of reasons. Well, uh, one, because for a long time I thought I was the only person in the world who, who experienced that. And I felt like a real freak and was ashamed of it, weirdly. Um, <clears throat> so if you have that, then it's just not just you. Um, and the other reason I, I, I wanted to do it is because if you ever see me walking around and I'm doing this, um, come give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch me. <laughs> I'm a complicated guy. Uh, thanks for coming out and supporting this. Cheers. Good night.